Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Today we're gonna make some finishing touches or modifications to this hydraulic ram pump. If you guys caught a couple videos ago, we built this hydraulic ram pump as an alternative to finding a water source for our pond because with as dry as a summer as we have been, we were losing so much to evaporation. We may still have some leaks in the bottom of the pond that we still need to solve. But first, we at least need to make sure we have good water and a steady supply of water running into the pond. How these ram pumps work is they are able to pump water uphill with no external source of power, electricity, an engine, anything like that. They use the power of falling water and head pressure to store energy in this pressure tank and they'll allow you to pump water uphill. The general rule of thumb is every one foot of head pressure that you have, you can pump water seven feet uphill. Uh, I'll put a link to that video up above, but in that video, we were just kind of setting this up for testing purposes to make sure that we had a proof of concept and that the pump would actually work. And now that we've found that out, uh, it ran really well for about three weeks, but we've got to make some fine tuning adjustments to get it more permanently set up. Let me show you uh, why the pump stopped running and what we're going to do to make sure that it'll run for five, six months at a time without having to do anything. When we originally set this hydraulic ram pump in the creek bed, we had it sitting just like this under its own weight, hoping that it would balance and stay up. I had some rocks kind of supporting it from tipping over, but what I found out is that over time, your pressure tank will start to get waterlogged over time. And as you build up water in here, you start to lose the effectiveness of your pressure tank because due to the physical properties of water, water does not compress, air does compress, and that's what gives you your PSI to pump water up the hill. And also what it does is as you start to build water in here, this starts to get top heavy. And since I didn't have anything supporting the weight of this ram pump from tipping over, it obviously fell over and caused this pressure tank to get completely waterlogged. Now, when it comes to ram pumps, I am no expert. Uh, there's a gentleman on YouTube, his name is Seth. He has a YouTube channel called Land to House. He has dedicated a lot of time and videos to these hydraulic ram pumps, testing them in every different circumstance. And from what he has said is that uh, these pressure tanks, they're going to waterlog. There's no, nothing you can do to avoid that, but typically you can get five to six months out of them uh, before they get waterlogged and you need to drain them to start it over. But when it tips over, obviously that is going to expedite the waterlogging of your pressure tank. So uh, one thing that I found is since it's going to be something we're gonna have to deal with is waterlogged pressure tanks, you know, once or twice a year, I need to have some way to drain this. So I wanna put some kind of valve on here so that I can drain that. Uh, all I gotta do is go down there, flip a switch, drain it, and then close it back off again and be ready to run. Uh, the second modification that I want to make to this is on my inlet and out feed pipe. I just had my hoses hooked right onto a nipple here with some hose clamps. And that makes it very difficult when you're down in the creek trying to get this disconnected because I said in my last video, we're only gonna have this out spring, summer, and fall. We're going to take this out in the winter time so we don't blow apart all these fittings with ice and snow. Uh, so I want an easy way to get this set up. So we're gonna add some unions on the inlet and out feed side. The third and final modification I wanna make is I need to find a way to get this thing to stand upright. So I'm gonna build a little more solid platform to keep this thing standing upright and from tipping over so the pressure tank doesn't get waterlogged. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. So here's a little tip that neighbor Doug shared with me. Grease those threads on the uh, male end of the union here. That way whenever you go to disconnect it in the fall, you don't have an issue with uh, anything seizing up on you.
Well, there we go. There is the finished product. We've got it set up with our unions on either end so that set up in the spring and tear down in the fall will be a breeze. Nice thing about unions is you can spin the nut and tighten them up without having uh, the hydraulic ram pump spinning or the hose spinning on the other end. This nut here spins freely and independently of both of those and allows you to bring those two together. Uh, we've got our ball valve on our pressure tank, so that way if our pressure tank gets waterlogged over time, we can shut the valve off here to turn the pump off, drain that water out of the pressure tank until it's completely empty and full of air again, shut this back off, and get the pump going again. And lastly, we've got it mounted to this piece of white oak here. Uh, white oak is supposed to be one of the most rot resistant pieces of wood that you can get aside from treated, and some people even argue that white oak uh, is even more rot resistant than treated lumber that you buy from the hardware store. So I had a scrap piece left over from the sawmill. I just cut a little bit off uh, so that these unions can spin freely. I cut it shorter than where those unions hang out. That way, you know, I can get a hold of those pretty easily. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and take this down to the creek, get it all set up. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is I use these, um, what is it, galvanized tab tape. And I put, uh, since I was connecting them over top of the PVC, I put a little piece of foam in between there. And yeah, this is pretty solid. You can see it'll wobble a little bit, but it stays upright. So let's go throw this in the creek and see how it works. All right, so we got the ram pump all set up again. There's our drive line coming down from where I'm standing right now. That's about six or seven foot worth of head pressure. Comes on down here to the ram pump and let's go ahead and get it started again. I already got the line primed so it's ready to go. Just push that down and it should start cycling on its own. And then that is going to store pressure in the pressure tank and push water up this hill all the way up to the top up there and we'll go up there and see what kind of flow we're getting out right now there we go we are back to our full flow that we were before our pressure tank got waterlogged so i'd say all of our fittings and everything are nice and tight and this pump is going to run for a while now and i'll have to worry about it falling over or the water tank getting waterlogged anytime soon now, one of the most frequently asked questions we had from our original ram pump video is why don't we just siphon the water from the creek to the pond? You'd have a lot more flow that way than with this ram pump. And I think a lot of people were under the impression that the pond is at a lower elevation than where we're pumping water out of the creek. And to be honest, I just kind of assumed that the pond was up higher but I really didn't actually do any research to figure out my elevations here to see if a siphon would work. And I'm really bad at eyeballing because the creek is almost a straight shot down, whereas the pond is a gentle decrease over probably about 200 yards. So the only real way to know for sure is either get out of transit and shoot grade, or I've got a better idea that's gonna be a little simpler. I've showed this in the past when we were building the pond, and I'll show it to you again, because it'll get you within six to 12 inches. It's not exact, but it's a lot easier setup time, and it'll help you figure out your grades. All right, so the easiest way I have found to shoot rough grade is with my drone. You can't really use it for finish grade if you were trying to put in a foundation, but it'll get you within about six to 12 inches, like I said before. Now, the number we we'll wanna be paying attention to is the height down in the bottom left-hand corner. That is gonna be consistent from your takeoff point. As you can see, I'm flying in a straight line out here, and my height is staying the same, even though the ground below the drone is actually increasing. So as I start to come down here, you can see my height now from my takeoff point. I'm actually 12, 13, 14, 15 feet below my takeoff point. And I want my water infeed to be about water level of the pond. So I'm turning around here and as I drop down, you'll see that my altitude is about 22 feet below my takeoff point. 
Now with that information in mind, we can fly over to the creek bed bottom and get an altitude reading there. As long as the altitude is higher at the creek bed bottom than 22 feet, which we just got from our pond water level, we know that we would have an effective siphon uh, because your outfeed has to be lower than your infeed and you should be able to pump water uphill over the ridge and then back down to the pond. And here I'm just flying in close to our takeoff point to show you our altitude right here is reading 0, 0.00 feet. And you can see it gets us really close back to that top of the ridge. So I know we're within six to 12 inches of accuracy. So now we're gonna weave our way down through all the trees, get down to the creek bed bottom and see what our altitude change is from there. Uh, as you can see, we make our way up the creek and then we've gotta get down to our infeed pipe. Here's our pool that we're pulling from. And as we drop elevation to get as close to the creek as we can without flying the drone into the water, you can see we are 7.5 feet below our takeoff point. So that leads me to believe that we could have an effective siphon. We have actually 15 feet of elevation change from the creek bed bottom down to the pond. So this is what I absolutely love about having a YouTube channel is we post videos on the different projects and things that we get into. I'm only 30 years old and I'm an accountant, so I don't have experience with ram pumps or moving water from point A to point B. Whereas a lot of you guys watching these videos have been doing this kind of stuff for 20, 30 years and have a lot more experience. And you usually leave us awesome suggestions down in the comments. So now I know from going and checking our elevations that a siphon will indeed work and it's gonna put out a lot more flow than the 1.33 gallons that we're putting out with this hydraulic ram pump. So even though our hydraulic ram pump does work, a siphon just has so much more potential to move more water. Uh, I, I still don't consider this a lost exercise though because we got the experience of building a ram pump, putting it together, uh, getting it to work, and playing with all the intricacies of different head pressures, outflow rates, all that. So it was a really good learning experience and I, now I have that under my belt for a potential future use where a ram pump might come in handy. And I'm also glad I was able to bring you guys along and introduce you to a ramp pump if you've never seen one before. But I think we're gonna cut this video here. I'll do a separate video on getting a siphon going to the pond. If you guys enjoyed this one and some of the information on the ramp pump, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.